I'm Brenda Cathcart of Moed Ministries International, and this is a special edition of Shadows of the Messiah. Those of us in the Messianic or Hebrew Roots movement have learned to value Torah and recognize that salvation comes through faith in Yeshua and that we live out our faith by living according to God's guidelines as revealed in the Torah. Paul refers to those good works we are to be engaged in after we believe. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As we dive into the Torah, we naturally turn to those who have been studying the Torah for thousands of years, the Jews. We discover many Jewish people with strong faith in God, yet they do not believe that Yeshua is their Messiah. Our hearts connect with them. How can these people who love God and from whom we have learned so much about the Torah really not have attained to the promise of eternal life? The thought is nearly unthinkable. So we begin to question. Do they really need to believe in Yeshua as Messiah, or is it enough to believe in a Messiah? We begin to reason that Yeshua is the Son of God and one with the Father. He does in fact refer to himself as the I Am, John 8, 58. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So, since Yeshua is one with the Father, is belief in the Father enough for salvation? Two verses that seem to support this are found in Psalms. Psalms 116.13 I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And in Psalms 55.16 As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Both verses say the Lord, the yud heh vav -Hey, will save them. So is there a means of salvation apart from Yeshua? This question leads to a dangerous theology known as dual covenant theology. Dual covenant theology maintains that God's covenant with the Jews is different than the one he made with the Gentiles. In the latest incarnation of this theology, it asserts that the Jews don't need to believe that Yeshua is the Messiah in order to be saved. They just need to believe and observe the covenant God made through Moses at Mount Sinai. If they believe and observe it with all their hearts, they will be saved. On the other hand, since Gentiles weren't included in the covenant at Mount Sinai, they need to be saved through the new covenant. That is, they need to believe in Yeshua as their Messiah. So according to dual covenant theology, the Jews only need to observe the old covenant and the Gentiles only need to observe the new covenant. We may argue that we don't really believe this. We say we believe that everyone needs the new covenant for salvation. But if faith in the yud heh vav -Hey is the same as faith in Yeshua, since Yeshua is one with the Father, then is faith in God enough for salvation, enough to enter the new covenant? Is it enough to call on the yud heh vav -Hey without accepting that God sent Yeshua in response to their call? If calling on God for salvation is enough for Jews, is it also enough for Gentiles? Can't we then, as Gentiles, just convert to Judaism and call on the yud heh vav -Hey and receive salvation? Do we really need to accept that believing in Yeshua is our only means of salvation? As Torah-observant believers, we spend a lot of time reading and studying the Torah. But how much time do we spend reading and studying the words of our Messiah in the Gospels? Let's let Yeshua address this question about salvation. What does Yeshua say about why he came, who he came for, and what constitutes saving faith? Yeshua told his disciples that he came to do the will of the Father, the one who sent him, and to finish his work. John 4, 34. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. What is the work of the Father that Yeshua is to finish? Yeshua goes on to explain that the work includes all judgment. John 5, and 23. 
For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Yeshua states that the only way to honor the Father is to honor the Son that the Father sent. The judgment with which Yeshua is entrusted includes giving life to whom he will. John 5, 24 to 27. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. As we read this, we could grab a hold of the phrase, believe in him who sent me and say, that only belief in the Father is necessary to pass from death into life. But this leaves out the first part, that they must also hear the voice of the Son of God. Only those who hear the voice of the Son of God will live. Yeshua had earlier explained in a personal one-to-one -one meeting with Nicodemus that the Father sent him, the Son, specifically to bring life. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The purpose of Yeshua's coming was not to condemn the world. However, judgment has been entrusted to the Son to give life to those who hear. What about those who don't hear? Yeshua explained that to Nicodemus as well. John 3, 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Those who do not believe in the Son are already condemned. Do you hear these words? They are so strong. Yeshua is not saying that the Gentiles are the ones who need to believe in the Son of God. He is speaking to a Jew. It is this salvation that Isaiah wrote about. Yah, the Father, has become the salvation of Israel by sending his Son to finish the work. This is the salvation that all Israel had been waiting for. Isaiah 25, 9. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The Lord's salvation is to believe in the one the Father sent. Yeshua explains in John 6, 39 and 40. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing but raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Yeshua had spoken earlier to those who flocked to him. He told them they sought him for the physical satisfaction they could have, the loaves and the fishes that Yeshua provided for them to eat, as well as the signs and wonders that he performed. He admonished them to seek after the eternal provision available through him. John 6, 27 to 29. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. The work they are to seek out and do is simple. They are to believe the one the Father sent. Those who do not accept the one the Father sent will not be accepted by the Father. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, 
him I will also confess before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Jewish leaders had difficulty accepting Yeshua. Yeshua addressed their resistance by referring them back to Moses. John 5, 45 and 46. Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. Let's look at a comparison between Moses and Yeshua. God said that he had come down to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt and take them to the promised land. Exodus 3, 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Then God tells Moses that he is going to send Moses to deliver the people. God is choosing Moses to act in his stead. Exodus 3:10. Come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. How important is it that the children of Israel accept that Moses is the one God sent to bring deliverance? Moses was especially concerned that the children of Israel would not believe that God sent him. He asked God what he should say if the children of Israel asked by what authority he comes. Exodus 3, 13 and 14. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God then gave Moses key words to speak that would recall God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus 3, 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. Moses then asked what he should do if the children of Israel don't believe him. And God gave Moses signs to show that God had sent him. Exodus 4, 1. Then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. God gave Moses the sign of turning his staff into a serpent and back again. He gave him the ability to bestow and remove leprosy. Finally, he gave him the ability to turn the waters of the Nile into blood. Each one of these signs has messianic significance. Only those who believed in the signs followed Moses' instructions for the Passover, and followed Moses out of Egypt were actually delivered from Egypt. Those who didn't believe that God sent Moses stayed behind in Egypt and never experienced deliverance. Now let's turn to Yeshua. God appeared to Joseph and told him that the child Mary was carrying was the Son of God and that God was sending this child to bring salvation to his people. Matthew 1, 20 and 21. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. God prepared the way for the coming of Yeshua by sending the messenger before him. Mark 1, 1 through 3. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. This is a sign that Yeshua was sent by God to bring salvation. Yeshua performed many signs to show that God had sent him. 
But the people demanded more signs, citing Moses providing manna in the wilderness. John 6, 30-33 Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe it? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. When Yeshua appeared in the temple and drove out the money changers and merchants, the leaders of the people demanded to know what authority he was given to do so. Yeshua referred them back to John the Baptist and his message of the coming Messiah. Matthew 21, 23 to 27. Now when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Since they did not accept the testimony of John, then Yeshua declined to reveal that God had sent him to bring salvation. With Moses, only those who believed that God had sent Moses to deliver them from Egypt actually received deliverance. Similarly, only those who believed that Yeshua was sent by God to bring salvation actually received salvation. Yeshua said that only those who eat of his flesh and drink of his blood will have eternal life. John 6, 53-57 Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. There is no dual covenant. There is one covenant for both Jew and Gentile through which they may obtain salvation. That covenant is through the new covenant instituted by Yeshua's body and blood. Matthew 26, 26 to 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Yeshua is the one God sent to answer their call to the yud heh to bring them salvation. Peter testified in the temple about Yeshua. Acts 2, 36-38 Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Only those who believed that Yeshua was both Lord and Messiah repented and were baptized in the name of Yeshua for the remission of those sins. They were the ones who received the gift of the Holy Spirit. After healing the man born lame, Peter preached in the temple that their rejection of Yeshua was a rejection of God. Acts 3, 13-15 the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, 
whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. Peter later testified before the council, the Jewish leadership, that Yeshua was the builder whom the psalmist said would come and that they would reject. Acts 4, 11 and 12. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. A friend of mine was pondering on the statement that belief in Yahovah, the yud heh vav -Hey, was the same as belief in Yeshua, because Yeshua and the Father are one. She wrote, If Yeshua is the yud heh vav -Hey, and the Jews are saved by belief in the yud heh vav -Hey, then who did they reject? The Apostle John stated unequivocally, rejection of the Son is rejection of the Father. 1 John 2, 23. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Paul explains that salvation for both the Jew and the Gentile comes through the gospel, the good news of Yeshua. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Although our hearts want to deny that the Jews we have encountered who love God and follow the Torah have fallen short of the promise of eternal life, the testimony of Yeshua says otherwise. God came down to bring salvation to his people. His coming was through the agency of his son sent to bring the salvation they had cried out for. In order to receive the salvation from God, they must believe in the one sent to bring that salvation. Paul, a devout Jew and knowledgeable Torah scholar, grieves about their failure to attain salvation and eternal life even more than we do. Romans 9, 1 through 5. I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the eternally blessed God. Amen. We sometimes fear to present the gospel to our Jewish friends because we fear insulting them, or we fear that they will reject not only the gospel, but our friendship as well. But ask a Messianic Jew how important Yeshua is in their lives. They will tell you that their life was saved because someone shared the gospel with them. Paul tells us in Romans 10, 14 and 15, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Don't fear to preach the gospel of peace and salvation to Jew and Gentile alike. Don't fear to tell them that God sent his son to bring the salvation that they have called upon him to provide. Accepting Yeshua is the only way to receive the salvation of God. Thank you for watching. I'm Brenda Cathcart for Moed Ministries International. Shalom and be blessed.